everyone, I'm Ashley and today I'm going to be talking about some of the books that made me who I am today. I'm basically doing this because it's my birthday on the 24th of February on Sunday and this was inspired by Lily who actually did a video about the 23 books for the 23 years that she has been alive <laughs> and I think she was inspired by someone called Kate at Girl Reading I think. But I will link both of them down in the description box below. But I just thought I would do something to kind of celebrate my 21st birthday on my channel. And while I'm not doing the same as what Lily did because she chose a book for every year, I am going to be talking about the books that I think have influenced me in some way and have made me the person that I am today. I have kind of put these in an order from the age I was when I read them, so I do start out younger and end up where I am today as the video is meant to be. <laughs> so the first one that I'm going to talk about is The Faraway Tree Collection by Enid Blyton. This is just a whole collection of stories about three siblings who find a magical tree and at every opportunity possible they escape to this enchanted woodland, climb up the faraway tree and on the top branch there ends up being a different world every single time. These would be really quite nonsensical worlds. All I can really remember is one that spun around constantly but in every single world they ended up getting into some sort of adventure and would always make it home for tea by the end. <laughs> now I'm sure that I read fantasy books before this one but this is the one that I remember the most from when I was really young and I just absolutely adored it. I have reread this book so many times when I was younger and I just still love it to this day like I just have such fond memories of this book and I feel like this influenced a little adventurer inside me because when I was younger I always used to climb trees and I remember thinking of these characters every single time and being completely convinced that if I just climbed a branch higher then I would end up in a new world. <laughs> I remember associating this book with my outdoor adventures all the time but I do think this was my first proper love of a fantasy book which obviously has come through to this day and it very much inspired the little adventurer within me and it might have also made me have a weird obsession for trees because I bloody love plants now as you can <laughs> probably tell from my background. <laughs> the next ones I'm going to talk about is actually a collection of books and that is the horrible history books. I don't have any of these because I did borrow all of them but when I say that I borrowed all of them I do mean all of them. <laughs> all of the ones that were published at the time when I was younger anyway. I absolutely adored horrible histories. I remember borrowing these from school and every single time the teacher said that there were new ones in I remember just scouting through the library as fast as I could just trying to get hold of any new book that they had and I also watched the Horrible Histories TV program every single day religiously. I absolutely loved Horrible Histories and to this day I think it's one of the best ways to get children into history. In fact I still love it now. I have re-watched the TV show because it's on Netflix so it is a little bit crude because it is aimed towards children but yeah I just can't help but love it. And I do think that this is what stemmed my love for history so much because there are so many different books and it covers all sorts of history, all different periods and I to this day find it so difficult to kind of specifically choose one period of history that I want to focus on or that I love reading about. I mean if you know me then you probably know that I've got a recent love for ancient history and I do think that that's the period if any that I would zone in on particularly but I do find pretty much all periods of history fascinating and I do blame these books for that because I read them all, I watched it all, I blame it entirely. <laughs> so the next one is one that is obvious and you're probably all gone troll your eyes but we have Harry Potter. I'm sure you all know what this story is about but in case you don't this is about Harry Potter who discovers he is a wizard at the age of 11 and he goes off to Hogwarts, finds out he is the boy who lived and all that fun stuff. <laughs> While I do absolutely adore the story of this book, of course I do, that isn't the reason why this is on this list. This book is on this list because of Hermione Granger. When I was younger I was desperate to be exactly like Hermione Granger. This went beyond her just being a favourite character. This was me actively trying to be like Hermione Granger. I would read as much as possible so that I was like Hermione. I would get genuinely excited when I got homework because that meant I was like Hermione. I would try so hard in school because I wanted to be like Hermione and this 
has very much stuck with me. <laughs> my education is one of the things I value most in my life. <laughs> I can't even begin to describe the longing and the desperation that I felt simply for wanting to be Hermione Granger and that is kind of still there, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but this has turned me into a person who values their education above a lot of things. Like it's one of the things I value most in my life and I constantly try my very hardest to do as best as I can. Which sounds amazing but it does come with its downfalls because it means that the amount of pressure that I put on myself and the the lows that I reach when I don't do as good as I want to do really hit hard. So it's not always a good thing but I just can't get over this intense need for knowledge. I just want to learn everything possible and that's impossible. <laughs> and it's something that endlessly frustrates me so much. So much so that I have actually written a blog post about this. I will leave that down below if you're interested. But I do blame Hermione Granger for this because it was just instilled in me for years upon years of my childhood that I want to be Hermione and I want to be smart and I want to be everything that she is. That that's what I find most appealing when it comes to people and it's also what I value the most. <laughs> Please can I just be as smart, as educated, as an amazing person as Hermione Granger, please. <laughs> so the next one I'm going to talk about is The Lovely Bones by Alice Siebold and by most people's standards I was probably too young to read this when I did because this is about a 14 year old girl who is raped and murdered and it's told from her perspective as she's looking down from heaven watching her family find this out. So it's definitely a hard hitting book, like it's such a horrible story and I don't know how I got my hands on it as young as I did. I must have been maybe around 12 or 13, I'm not quite sure. I remember I was younger than her because that was like a thought that really stuck with me. But all the way through my childhood I pretty much just focused on fantasy books and I still do that to this day. And the closest I got to contemporary fiction really was Jacqueline Wilson books but they always quite while they handle dark subject matter or like serious subject matter, they always tend to end on a high. So this book was very different from that because it is sad. Like it's so inherently sad that reading it for the first time, I just remember being haunted by the story for weeks and not because like I was too young to read it and it shocked me and like scarred me, but because I genuinely grieved for a girl that I didn't know. And it kind of just showed me <laughs> the horrible side of the world and it really opened my eyes to what can happen but I don't think it was that that stuck with me I think it was this idea of grieving and seeing these people grieving and also knowing that it's okay not to be okay because that's kind of a thing that's very much explored in this book I think this is a story that has always stuck with me and I actually reread it last year I think and still had the same feelings for it. This book just invokes so many heart-wrenching feelings in me and I just feel like it's always stayed with me and it's kind of moulded me into this person that's kind of always been a bit more understanding of grief and I mean I have been through it myself so I do get that and returning to it after I've experienced it versus before I've experienced it was really quite interesting. I just think that even though I read it quite young it was something that I needed to come across in a way even though I kind of like jumped in at the deep end but you know <laughs> you gotta start somewhere right? Next up we have another really popular children's book and that is the Percy Jackson series by Rick Riordan. This is about Percy Jackson who is a demigod. A demigod is basically the child of a great god and a human. So yeah, he finds out he's a demigod, he goes to Camp Half-Blood and he goes on lots of adventures that are all inspired by Greek myth. Now as you might imagine, this one very much reminded me of my love for Greek mythology that I loved when I was a lot younger because we did do... We were kind of taught about it in primary school but I came across these books a lot later on. I think I must have been around 13 when I was reading the series because I remember talking about them on Twitter. <laughs> but I still adore these books to this day and like I said it did remind me of my love for Greek mythology but it didn't quite stick with me yet. The actual reason that this book is on this list is because with the series it kind of... I felt like I accepted being passionate about books when it came to the series because 
Like I said, I was talking about this book on Twitter and I would see Tumblr posts about it, I would actively search through fan art. I became so dedicated to the series that I was just, I felt constantly excited to be talking about books and that wasn't really something that I'd come across before. I've always been a reader but I've not always been a fangirl. There we go. Reading this when I was introduced or became a part of the internet culture, I guess, really made me accept that it was completely fine to be a little bit weird and to talk about books all the time. And this has ultimately stemmed into this entire thing, like having a YouTube channel that's dedicated to books and a book blog and talk about them on Twitter and on Instagram and just... I don't care if people find it strange that I talk about books so much because I care about them, so... That's their problem. <laughs> and I do feel like it was this series that kind of introduced me to that and like... You will always find your people, like, you can talk about what you want passionately and people will come and find you, so... That's what this book taught me in a way. Because it was talking about this book where I found my people in the end. <laughs> so next up we have The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chaposky and... This was kind of like a similar effect to The Lovely Bones. This follows Charlie who is starting... He's starting some kind of new year at school and he's very much, well, a wallflower. He doesn't really fit into any particular group and he's quite shy. And this book is basically him writing letters in a way to kind of cope with that. But again, I would say this book is one of those that made me realise it's okay not to be okay because this is a very idealised version of high school in America. And you know, it kind of follows the teenagers that feel more indie and it's all about friendship and all those lovely things. And it is very much... At first it appears quite an idealised version but it's got the undertones of something worse. It's a book that kind of shows you that not everything's perfect and come the end it does take quite a dark turn. It again really opened my eyes to the fact that people have a lot more going on than appearances. As well as that I also just related to this on a mental health level. Not for the same reasons but you can kind of get the general anxious feeling all the way through this book and you can kind of tell that something more is going on if you understand it. And I'd never before read something that kind of captured that sense of loneliness and always feeling left out and how good it feels to finally feel accepted. I'd never read that before and I related to it so hard that I just clung to the story and I think the second that I finished this book I reread it because I kind of wanted to feel it again. As young as I was I didn't quite understand it at the time because I didn't know that I had mental health problems at that point in my life but I did relate to this book and now I understand why. And this book just generally holds so much nostalgia for me like if I hear the soundtrack for the film or if I just even looking at the cover brings nostalgia to me and yeah, I feel like this book, while it's completely different to my own lifestyle and I can't really relate to the story in the sense of what happens, I related to it in terms of mentality and that, <laughs> that kind of registered so much deeper than anything else that I'd read at this point and made me feel accepted or seen for the first time. And then we take quite a large jump to relatively modern day with the Odyssey by Homer. This one is translated by Evie Ryu and I... This is the revival that I was waiting for. <laughs> it wasn't last summer but it was the summer before where I kind of went through a shift in reading tastes and I was kind of intrigued about Greek mythology and just ancient history in general so I started kind of researching it and quite a bit later on I ended up reading the Iliad by Homer. Loved it but wasn't quite yet convinced the ancient history wouldn't be like dense to get through or hard to read so I wasn't yet convinced that I would really adore ancient literature even though I wholeheartedly wanted to. So then I picked up the Odyssey which comes after the Iliad and follows the hero Odysseus as he attempts to make his way home but it takes him 10 years to get home because he basically pisses off Poseidon <laughs> so he makes it mighty hard for him to sail home. This book that just clicked with me instantly this is basically a fantasy novel but like ancient literature style. There are so many monsters in this. It's such a fantastical read and I really love learning about ancient history and ancient myths through the lens of 
a fantasy book. Like, it's incredible. And I feel like the more I think about this book and the more I talk about it, the more passionate I get about it because I just constantly find out more within it. There's so many interesting characters, so many interesting creatures, there's just so much to it that I can't help but, like, I mean, look at me. I'm so happy to be talking about it that this is what has happened. <laughs> And my love for this book has kind of just solidified the revival of my love for mythology and ancient history. Reading this has stemmed into me wanting to read more ancient literature and reading Greek myth retellings. Also reading non-fiction history books about ancient history and I just I feel like it's thoroughly taken over and I would really really love to study ancient literature as a master's degree so I would specialise in that but I don't think I'll be able to for many different reasons. It is frustrating because I do feel like a real amateur when it comes to ancient mythology and ancient history in general because like I said I am trying to teach myself so I do feel very much like an amateur and it kind of I'm really quite uncomfortable with that because I do I'm aware that I talk about it a lot and people have started associating me with Greek myth but I don't want people to kind of come across my videos hear me talking about it and then be like you don't actually know what you're talking about so it does frustrate me that I can't actually learn about it in a different way and know that I'm doing it right because just teaching myself I don't quite retain as much details and things like that but I'm trying and it's something that I'm going to be continuing with for many years to come I can feel it this isn't going away anytime soon so yeah stick with me guys if you like mythology because I'm trying I'm really trying to learn as much as possible <laughs> But yes, those are all the books that I feel like have made me who I am today. I'm sure that in my 21 years of existence there have been many different books that have kind of influenced me in different ways, but these are the ones that I remember the most. Yeah, I just kind of find it interesting to see what I've taken away from these different books and why I remember them the most. So I do really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was a kind of celebration of my 21st birthday. <laughs> Let me know if you've read any of the books that I've mentioned in this video and what your thoughts on them were if you have. And as for now I hope you're having a wonderful day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye!